Hello students, looking at current affairs for 17th April, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these seven. We'll look at them in detail. The first one, fresh cases rise by over 800. Government pegs fatality rate at 3.3%. So India has registered over 800 COVID-19 positive cases on 16th April with the tally touching 12,759 cases and 420 deaths so far. 10,820 four of these active cases, 1,541 people have been cured and discharged and one of them has also migrated. Total number of cases including foreigners in the country so far have been 76. And the health ministry noted that India's fatality rate is 3.3%, means of all the COVID-19 infected, 3.3% have died and percentage of people recovered presently is 12.02%. However, there's a little variation in the Home Ministry's data, Central Home Ministry's data and the State Health Department's aggregate. So, the total number based on State Health Department's is 13,3939, while Central Government says it's 12,759. So, there is data discrepancy which is seen, which has been highlighted earlier too, but uh, the, it continues in the same manner. So, that is that. So, here you can see this is... Uh, how India has been faring over the month of April. You can see number of cases have spiked up in the last few days too. Number of recoveries as such have also been increasing. Then next is all residents of Indore to be screened for COVID-19. So Indore grapples with a high fatality rate from COVID-19. Uh, and uh, now the city administration in Madhya Pradesh, uh, in city of Indore, has said that it will survey all residents for SARI, that is influenza-like illness and severe acute respiratory illness. So the rate of COVID-19 here has shot up to 12%, which is highest in the country. And there are 28 lakh residents in the city, which is the largest and most populous city of Madhya Pradesh. And health workers have already screened 7 lakh. The rest will also be screened, it is said, in the next five days. So, our number of COVID-19 cases here is 707, which is the third highest number in the country after Mumbai and Delhi. And the city of Indore is known to be the cleanest city in the country. It has been ranked at the top thrice consecutively under Swachh Bharat uh, mission. And it accounts for more than half of 1,631 COVID-19 cases of Madhya Pradesh. Then next is seafarers may return in three phases. So government is working out on a plan to allow seafarers to return to India. So in the first phase, mariners on ships that are already on Indian at Indian ports will be allowed to be disembarked when lockdown is partially eased on 20th April. In the second phase, those in ships on deep sea will be allowed to return by sea. And in the last stage, those who have disembarked from their ships and signed off in foreign country will also be permitted to come back. So the first phase will be commencing on April 20. Next three phases will come later. No date has been given for that. Next is Wuhan's wet markets reopen, face heat. So a at the large food market in the Chinese city of Wuhan where COVID-19 is said to have uh, initiated. So it was through the live food, wildlife being sold here that COVID-19 is said to have spread across the globe and now these wet markets in China which had been banned earlier have been opened up. So uh, the, this uh, actually but here though they have been opened up selling of wild animals and live fowl have not been allowed but still the wet market being opened up has resulted in criticism internationally and uh, still the countries across the globe are fighting COVID-19 and China's wet markets have been opened. So it has drawn criticism around the world. But China is said to have contained COVID-19 and has ended lockdown. Then next is Zoom is not a safe platform, says Ministry of Home Affairs. So, Ministry of Home Affairs has issued an advisory that US-based Zoom video conferencing platform is not safe. So, this is US-based company. It's a video communication platform, but uh, and it has seen an exponential rise in usage in India too during the present lockdown. And uh, it is actually the software, it is said, used in the online platform is made in China. 
and some calls were being routed through servers in China. So that is why Ministry of Home Affairs has issued set of guidelines for its safe usage, and it has been stated that this is not for use by government offices and officials. Then next is new normal: more airport time, no frills, and higher fare. So passengers taking a flight must prepare to spend more time at the airport. There'll be temperature checks and fewer frills on board. There'll be you no know, food served in all aircrafts and possibly higher airfares too because airlines, airports and government are working to ensure physical distancing. So some seats will also be left blank. Hand hygiene, sanitized environment will be made sure. So airlines would commence operations once the lockdown is lifted and steps have been taken. Work has been done on how this would be initiated. So first of all, it would be that time to be taken at the airport will be more. So you'll, the reporting time presently for domestic flights is 45 minutes before the departure time. But this may increase to two hours earlier. Two hours earlier before departure time. That would be the requirement for domestic flights too. And there are further protocols being finalized, guidelines being, fi being finalized by Ministry of Civil Aviation, the Airports Authority of India, the Safety Regulator for uh, you know, Director General of Civil Aviation, and even the Aviation Security Watchdog, Bureau of Civil Aviation Security. So all are together finalizing guidelines for airports and airlines. Security at airports is provided by CISF, Central Industry Security Force. It has also submitted its recommendations on security protocol to the Ministry of Civil Aviation. Like it needs measurement of body temperature at airport entrance, which should be ensured. Even questionnaire on health conditions should be filled by passengers. Alternate check-in counters should be opened. And only alternate check-in counters and there should be, you know, e-checking which should be encouraged. Also security personnel should be equipped with protective care. So these are the recommendations of CISF. So this DGCA, Director General of Civil Aviation Guidelines also say that middle row of seat should be left vacant. Possibly even uh, the guidelines are being finalized, but possibly even four out of six seats in a row would be left empty. So such will be the guidelines which will be coming forth. So this is the gist of what we just discussed. Check-in time would be more. Airfares will also go up because if seats are being left vacant, Self check in will be encouraged and meals would not be offered by budget airlines. Full service carrier Vistara may offer meals. Then, next is the last news China may have conducted nuclear tests, US. So, US State Department has come up with a report which says that China may have secretly set off low level underground nuclear test explosions. So China claims that it is observing the international pact, but uh, US says that it has, it may have violated the central, uh, by the CTBT, that is Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. So these findings were first reported in Wall Street Journal, and now the US State Department has also made these allegations. Already US and China relations are strained because US President Donald Trump has blamed Beijing for mishandling the 2019 COVID-19 outbreak, which initiated in the city of Wuhan. And now this allegation of nuclear tests being conducted by China. So US concerns are there because Beijing has, uh, it says Beijing may have possibly breached the zero yield standard for test blasts. And this has been prompted because by activities which are seen at China's Lopnur nuclear test site throughout 2019. So there's a zero yield standard for test blasts. So for nuclear tests in which there's no explosive chain reaction of the type which is ignited by a detonation of nuclear warhead. So there is no explosive chain, such explosive chain reaction. This is called a zero yield test blast. So the zero yield test blast has been breached by China is what US alleges. So uh, the, also it is true that China is not transparent. It blocks its data transmission from sensors which are linked to monitoring centers operated by international agencies that verify the compliance with the comprehensive test ban treaty. So that has resulted in concerns being raised. So comprehensive test ban treaty of 1996 allows activities designed to ensure safety of nuclear weapons but tests as such are banned. So here you can see this is the comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty which bans any nuclear weapon test explosion or any other nuclear explosion in all environments for military and civilian purposes. So it was adopted in 1996 but uh, has not yet entered into force because as of May 2010, 153 states have ratified the CTBT and another 29 have signed but not yet ratified. 
and there are countries which have signed not ratified include israel us china egypt indonesia and india north korea and pakistan have not even signed the treaty indonesia has initiated the ratification process you can see the wikipedia page too it says it is not in force so though more countries have ratified it but still it has not been enforced the states which have not signed it you can see even us has not ratified it so here you can see not ratified us comes in yellow color which is signed but not ratified then further we have more detail about uh, countries with biggest nuclear weapon arsenals so number one comes russia then comes us france and then china so compared to us you can see china's nuclear arsenal is quite less these are the nuclear weapon states uh, declared nuclear weapon states are the first five pakistan india israel and north korea are not recognized nuclear weapon states that is why india also refuses to sign these nuclear treaties and we have not signed them and nuclear tests been conducted how many tests have been conducted you can see us tops in this then comes soviet union france uk china and then india pakistan and democratic Repu uh, people's republic of korea that is north korea so that is it thank you